In part one of this travel guide, I discussed why, with who and where you're going on your cycling trip. I pointed out a few great spots around the world for trading and holiday, and I shared my thoughts on accommodation. In this part, we're going to talk about the bike rental versus bringing your bike in a bike box, your packing list, and planning your trip ahead. Big question is, are you going to bring your own bike or are you going to rent a bike on location? Now, if you're only riding for one or two days, the cheapest and easiest option will be to rent if there's a rental available. But if you're going for a longer trip, I prefer to bring my own bike. Obviously, you're going to need a bike box. You can rent a bike box for like a 50 or 100 euros for a week or 10 days. Buying a bike box will easily pay itself back if you do multiple trips. So I think it's a good investment. With bike boxes, in general, you have three options. The good old carton box. I have one from an old bike uh, and it's been living at the attic. I can use it for travel. The soft box or a bag and a hard case. I've used the hard case in the past. It gives the highest amount of protection to your bike, but it will be a little bit more work to pack everything up. The soft case, the bag is very easy. It stores very easy because you can roll it up and it's like a five minute pack. This one, I never used it, but it's very strong. And I would use this when I would go out and fly somewhere, bike touring for a month or whatever and not having to worry about leaving the box somewhere at the airport or just throw it away. I had a couple good experiences with the, the soft case, but my recent one wasn't that good where the case got back all bent. For my next travels, I will probably be looking again at uh, going with a hard case to, to transport my super expensive road bike. Bringing your own bike will save you time on your destination because you don't have to go out to search or pick up your rental bike. And also you don't have to mess around or worry about your bike fit because it's your own bike. However, packing up these bags can take you from like 10 minutes to an hour, depending on what bike box you're bringing and how much of your bike you have to dismount. But in some cases, bringing your own bike is the only option because there's simply no rental available. When you choose to bring a bike box on the plane, do your research about the airlines. Some airlines charge way more than others and also the, the bag allowance is different. I, in general in Europe, I choose Transavia or EasyJet because they have a 32 kilo bag allowance and it's about a 45 euro fee each flight. KLM, company I work for, charges 100 euros a flight and the bag allowance is only 23 kilos. So that's a big difference. About bike rentals, renting a bike will cost you about between 25 and 100 euros a day. Some countries are very expensive for rental bikes. So if you go on a longer trip, definitely cheaper to bring your own bike. Some rental bike companies won't allow you to change your stem or your saddle. Others have a super high level of service and they even like ballpark your bike fit before you get there. So you give all your measurements and they put on the right stem, the height of the seat, the height of the, the handlebar and everything. Find out in advance. One other thing I think is very cool about bike rentals that some places actually rent out super high-end bikes. So if you, if you have a pretty half decent normal bike at home, you can actually go out on your trip and ride like a top level bike for your holiday, which is an amazing experience. It will take you some time to go to the rental shop, pick up that bike, get your bike fit correct, then go back, you know. So bring your own bike Morning. can make it a little bit easier. People are looking at me like I am crazy. Mate, you are crazy. People don't know what dedication looks like. Because we slept in Krakow and I'm meeting up right here. What's up guys? The downside of traveling with a bike box is the bulky luggage. You need to get it to the airport first. When I travel with my family, in general, we go by public transport because bringing a bike box and two kids in the car simply doesn't fit. So make sure you rent a big vehicle when you go out on your trip, especially when you and more friends are bringing bike boxes. 
in that case it can be great if you have a local tour operator that's going to take out the stress of the logistics for example on our trip to taiwan we were picked up at the airport and transported all over the country from hotel to hotel we had a tour guide along the way the entire week which was awesome and you don't have to just rent a big car to get from the airport to your accommodation and then not use it for that for the rest of the week because you're riding your bike anyways in taiwan they brought a big van with a large roof rack that we loaded up with all our bikes we didn't have to worry about anything we didn't have the stress of the logistics to get to the race or to the accommodation where we wanted to be the organization took care of everything and we all all we had to do is just show up traveling by car can make everything a lot easier less stressful and you don't have to worry about bag allowance and uh, transportation on location and the good thing is you can load your trunk up with all your luggage you can take extra spares you can take some food for the first day so you don't have to go to the supermarket straight away and it's super fun to go out with a few friends to go on a road trip and to be riding bikes together i think you have to do that at least once obviously going to taiwan with the cars and an option so sometimes you just have to take the plane i'm gonna go inside and tell you guys on what to bring on your trip I'm crazy enough to be carrying a left crank arm with a power meter all around the world and just shove that on every rental bike that I got. The amount of stuff can vary between like one little carry-on or a mega suitcase that goes into the hole. Usually I take way too much and everything double, double, double and then I end up not using it, but you never know. For clothing, the minimum you should take that should cover most conditions will be your helmet, your glasses and shoes, a cycling cap, a couple pair of socks, two pair of bibs, two pair of jerseys, two base layers, arm and leg warmers, a neck gaiter, a wind vest and a rain jacket. When it's a bit colder at your location, bring gloves, a hat cap, overshoes, long sleeve jersey and bib tights and a winter jacket. For tools and other cycling gear, bring your head unit and a mounting clip with rubber straps, a heart rate trap, some basic tools like Allen keys, bike lights, power meters in pedals, a derailleur hanger. These break at the most unfortunate moment. Then bring some chain loop and a rag, a saddlebag with a pump, tire levers and two spare tires. If you want to take some extra, you can take an extra outer tire, a chain breaker, some latex if you're riding tubeless tires and a floor pump. For nutrition, take two large bidons and a shaker. This is great for your recovery shake and to make oatmeal. And if you're doing a race or an important event, bring the cycling nutrition that you're used to and have trained with to avoid stomach issues on D-Day. I usually estimate how many hours of riding I will do and take food accordingly. I always take these very lightweight bags to organize all of my stuff. For example, an old shoe bag would work perfectly. Planning your trip is super important and it's gonna save you loads of time once you're actually on location because that's when you wanna enjoy and ride your bike. So the following are the things that you should consider and find out before you go, well before you go. Make sure you have travel insurance for the trip you're going to. Check if there's a rental bike, book it, make sure it's all arranged. If you're taking your own bike, make sure it's on top condition. Mount new tires, a new chain, make sure your brake pads are all good. So you don't have to worry about that when you're on the other side of the world and you don't want to spend time going to a bike shop repairing your bike. Getting my tire fixed. It was the only bike shop that was open. They opened at 10 o'clock. Now when you go riding, bring some local cash. Because in your, when you're out there in the mountains and you stop at a random cafe for a new bottle of water, you cannot always pay with cards. So it's easy to have some cash available right away. I usually have a training plan, so I would discuss with my coach what I'm gonna do and what training rides I can or cannot do. Build your routes at home. Make a training plan for the days that you are on your trip. If you're going to a destination that I've been, check out my videos on the rides that I've done because I will always have my Strava file linked in the description so you can find my route right there. Check out Facebook groups, Instagram pages. They can help you out. These guys are the locals and know what they're talking about. Also, there's plenty of blogs. So use Google and your destination to find out a lot about where you're going. I always plan all of my routes while I'm at home. This saves me so much time when I'm away. 
So one thing I can recommend is to go to Strava Heatmaps or Kamut because these websites offer either a good route building functionality or ready-made routes that you could just download straight into your navigation computer and then you don't have to worry about that. I would also check Google Street View and just scroll through my route to see if there's any weird roads or closed off roads that I might want to avoid. There's even some destinations like the Stelvio, which is closed off for traffic a long time of the year because of snow. So make sure that those epic climbs that you want to do are open when you are there. Hey guys, I hope this video was helpful to you to plan your next cycling trip. I'm already making a few trips. If you want to see what I've been up to in the last years, where I've been going on all these trips, make sure you check up here because those videos are about the trips that I made. I went to every every place in the world you can think of. Well, not every, but a lot. Gonna see you next time. See ya! Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, England, Scotland, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Czech Republic, Taiwan, Poland, Latvia, Canary Islands, United States, Canada, Mexico, Curaçao, Suriname, Australia, Hong Kong, South Korea, Hungary, and China.